Hey everyone, Nate here with Miss Behaven. Today I'm picking elderberries and I'm going to take you through the steps I use to process them. So let's get started. Alright, the first thing you want to look for when you're harvesting elderberries is the stems that are, the berries are on. They need to be ideally a deep purple. Now sometimes when they're ripe, which is the deep purple that goes from green to purple, the birds are going to move in and pick the berries before you can get there. So sometimes you got to pick when the stems are turning to purple, but not when the purple is all the way back on the stem. Now as far as what I use to harvest, a good pair of pruning shears, and at least for me, the Fisker Pull Pruner. This allows you to pull either the knob on the back or the handle, and both actions close the pruning jaws. So if the bushes are taller than you can reach, you can still get to them. But most of the harvesting is done with a pair of pruning shears, and you need a large tub. In my case, I'm just carrying around a plastic wash tub and putting the berries in it. When fully ripe, it's not uncommon to get like 10 pounds of berries off a single bush. I'm also going to point out that this particular bush, or actually one, two, three, looks like there's three main stalks here, or root centers. I harvested them about a week ago, and you can see how many are left. So you're not going to get the entire plant usually harvested the first time you're out. So remember where the plants are that you have access to and that are fruiting, and just keep visiting them and picking the berries as they ripen. Best place is to find them along roads. Okay, another thing I'm going to point out, let me find a ripe cluster here. Okay, there's a correct and incorrect way to harvest the elderberry. So you've got, it always grows on the fresh wood or the, the one year wood. Ideally, you want to cut it where the last two leaves depart and the stem of the berries come out. If you pick it back here, you've just cut away a bunch of new growth, which the berries only form on the new growth that's established on the old growth. So you've got to have two and three year root stock or woody stock for the year, fresh one year stuff to grow at which point you get berries. So the less of the older stuff you destroy, the best. So normally you would cut it here. You're taking only the berry cluster and you're leaving the plant unharmed. There was a nice cluster up at the top. Bugs and birds haven't really touched it. So that's about as nice as they come, especially for wild. Okay, well that's it on this bush, or these three bushes. I'm gonna move on down the road and collect more of what I can get. And the next step will be freezing them. All right, the next step is to sort the berries out, put them in a big trash bag for the deep freeze. Now, normally, you can just take them and dump them in. However, sometimes you have insects that are brought back, especially squash bugs or soldier bugs or signs called, like this. You don't want them frozen up. Also look for clusters of berries that maybe are just a little bit past their peak. So like in this one, I'm going to tear it off, put that in, and I'll even keep this one. 
but the rest of these not looking so good. You can also smell some of them will have a little bit of a sour smell to them. That's because they're fermenting. That's not good. This one's a little too much green, so I'm going to call it. Definitely a good idea. Okay, now that you have them all sorted and in the trash bag, go put them in the freezer. You're going to need to leave them there until they're frozen solid, and then we'll show you the next step for getting them off the stems. Okay, when you get them out of the freezer, you'll see they're frosted up good. This is where you want to take the bag and slam it around a little. It usually knocks most of the berries off the stems. And now, you have to fork them off the stems, the ones that are left. You can use just regular fork. Since I'm a beekeeper also, I have a decapping comb, which works very well as well. Take your stems out. You can shake a lot of the berries off. There's gonna be just a few left. I don't even worry about them. One other option is to just work within the bag. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. Where it doesn't work is when you have to really start forking. Sometimes it's nice to be able to fork against the inside of the bucket. These berries seem to have pretty well taken themselves off the stem to the point where I'm not going to work too hard on the ones that are left. Now that you got them off the stems, you're left with frozen berries. Next step is to run them through a sieve to filter out most of the stems. Okay, running the berries through a sieve removes the stems. Mine is made out of quarter inch hardware cloth, also known as number four hardware cloth. And I made a frame out of it. It just about perfectly sits across my wash tub and then you have to pour the berries through while they're still frozen. If destemming them took you long enough or it was a hot enough day where they thawed, don't try to cut corners. Put them back in the freezer, freeze them up for 24 hours, pull them back out, and do this step. And there you are. You pulled the majority of the stems out with little or no effort. Make sure I got everything out of the trash bag. Looks like I did the first time. There's almost nothing left. And there we are. Berries. Now, you've got the choice of either thawing them and simmering them down to make syrup, or put them in freezer bags and freeze them back up for when you're ready to use them. All right, everyone, what you just saw me pick off the stems yielded five pounds of backpack berries. Not bad for a few minutes of work. If you've all enjoyed this video, please ask you to give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more like it, hit the uh, subscribe button, the bell notification, and I'll keep trying to upload content along the lines of homesteading, farming, and DIY. Thanks for watching.